Welcome. Thank you for joining us for this live stream Sunday service of the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Northfield. My name is Carol Spear, and my husband and I have been a member at UUFN for over four years. UUFN is an inclusive community that nurtures spiritual and intellectual growth and fosters ethical and social responsibility. We're grateful to be gathering both online and in person today, and we extend a warm welcome to everyone both on Zoom and in the sanctuary. If you are a visitor, we are glad you are with us and we invite you to stay after the service to get acquainted. We welcome your questions and look forward to hearing about you. We are mindful that we gather today with different needs. Whatever brings you here, you are welcome to come as you are and take what feeds you. Please know that technical difficulties may arise, yet we offer our best efforts, not with the goal of perfection, but to allow us to connect with one another while keeping our community safe. are A Place of Belonging and Caring by Kimberly Ann Tomzik Carlson. It is not by chance that you arrived here today. You have been looking for something larger than yourself. Inside of you, there is a yearning, a calling, a hope for more, a desire for a place of belonging and caring. Through your struggles, someone nurtured you into being instilling a belief in a shared purpose, a common yet precious resource that belongs to all of us when we share. And so you began seeking a beloved community, a people that does not put fences around love, a community that holds its arms open to possibilities of love, a heart home to nourish your soul and share your gifts. Welcome home. Come, let us worship together. I will light a chalice here in my home 
and you are welcome to light one in your home. Our church worship associate will also light the chalice at church. Please join me in speaking the words on your screen as we light the chalice, the symbol of our faith. Let us open our eyes to see what is beautiful. Let us open our minds to learn what is true. Let us open our hearts to love one another. Our opening hymn is Winds Be Still. For those of you in our church building, please hum only. On Zoom, you are welcome to sing along with muted mics. Winds be still, storm clouds pass and silence come. Please grace this time with harmony. Fly, bird of hope, and shine, light of love, and in calm let all find tranquility. Bird, fly high, lift our gaze toward distant view, help us to sense life's mystery. Ages today is Higgins, A Drop with a Dream, written by the Reverend Chris Bruce, minister of the Tennessee Valley UU Church in Knoxville, Tennessee, and it's delightful. Enjoy. Once upon a time, there was a drop of water named Higgins. Higgins was no ordinary drop of water. He was a drop with a dream. Higgins lived in a valley where it had not rained in a very long time. So all the lovely green grass was turning brown and all the beautiful flowers were wilting and all the trees were starting to droop. Higgins had a dream that one day the valley would be a beautiful place again. But what could he do? After all, it was only a drop of water. One day Higgins decided to travel and tell others about his dream. All the other drops listened very politely, but no one believed that his dream would come true. Higgins, said one, get your head out of the clouds. You can't spend your whole life dreaming. Higgins decided that he had to do something to make his dream come true. So he began to think and think and think. And one day, as he was walking by a rusty old bucket, he got an idea. If enough of us drops of water get together in this bucket, Higgins thought, there would be enough water to sprinkle on a few flowers to help them grow and become beautiful again. Eagerly, Higgins told everyone his great idea, but everyone thought he was being foolish. Higgins is nothing but a dreamer, they said. 
Higgins decided that he had to do something to convince the others that he was right. So he said to them, I don't know about you, but I'm getting into the bucket and I hope some of you will join me. Then there might be enough water to help at least some flowers grow beautiful again. So Higgins ran as hard as he could and hopped way up in the air and landed with a kerplunk in the bottom of the bucket. And there he sat, just a drop in a bucket. For a long time, Higgins was very lonely. It seemed like no one else was going to join him. But after a while, some of the other drops could see that the grass was dying and the flowers were wilting and the trees were drooping. They all agreed that something must be done. Suddenly, one drop shouted, I'm going in the bucket with Higgins. And he leaped through the air and landed kerplunk in the bucket. Then two other drops yelled, wait for us. And they hopped through the air and landed in the bucket. Then 10 drops jumped through the air into the bucket, then 30, then 50, then hundreds of drops came from all around just to hop into the bucket. Soon, the bucket was completely full of water, but there was still more drops that wanted to join. So they found another bucket and hopped in. And before long, there were two buckets of water, then three, then four, then 10, then hundreds, and then thousands of buckets of water. Along came a powerful breeze that blew over all the buckets and all the water flowed together to make a mighty stream flowers bloomed and the trees stood tall and straight once more. All of this happened because Higgins had a dream and his dream came true because he knew that although he was just a drop in a bucket, enough drops in the bucket make a bucket full. And when there are enough buckets with the wind behind them, then justice will roll down like waters and righteousness of a mighty stream. Though we are each only a drop in the bucket, we are cherished as individuals and powerful when we join together. This community helps hold us. In that spirit, each week when we gather, we carry the sorrows and celebrations of our own lives and share them. If you have a joy or a sorrow you would like to share with the group, you can type it into the chat box and I will read it aloud for all those listening. I will also read the joy and or the sorrow submitted before the service today on our online form. But first, I will light a candle in honor of all of the simple joys that are sustaining us. I light another candle in honor of the sorrows and hardships we might be carrying. And I will light one more candle in honor of the joys and sorrows we carry in our hearts but have not spoken a lot. We will now share a moment of silence together. Some of us will experience that silence as a time for prayer, some as a time for meditation, and some simply as a time to honor what has been left said and unsaid. I invite you into a silence of your understanding, holding our own lives and the world and our hearts. May we see all as it is 
and may it all be as we see it. May we be the ones who make it as it should be, for if not us, who, and if not now, when. This is answering the cry of justice with the work of peace. This is redeeming the pain of history with the grace of wisdom. This is the work we are called to do, and this is the call we answer now. To be the barrier and the bridge, to be the living embodiment of our principles, to be about the work of building the beloved community, to be a people of intention and a people of conscience. May it be so, and amen. We have two readings today. The first is O Me, O Life by Walt Whitman, a poem that lists the struggle of being human and then asks and answers what the meaning of life is where hope can be found. O Me, O Life, of the questions of these recurring, of the endless trains of the faithless, of cities filled with the foolish, of myself forever reproaching myself. For who more foolish than I, and who more faithless? Of eyes that vainly crave the light of the object's mean, of the struggle ever renewed, of the poor results of all, of the plodding and sordid crowds I see around me, of the empty and useless years of the rest with the rest me intertwined. The question, O oh me, so sad, recurring. What good amid these, O oh me, O oh life? That you are here, that life exists in identity, that the powerful play goes on and you may contribute a verse. Our second reading is by Annie Lamott. Oh my God, what if you wake up someday and you never got your memoir or novel written or you didn't go swimming in warm pools and oceans all those years because your thighs were jiggly and you had a nice big comfortable tummy or you were just so strung out on perfectionism and people pleasing that you forgot to have a big, juicy, creative life of imagination and radical silliness and staring off into space like when you were a kid. It's gonna break your heart. Don't let this happen. Thank you, Carol. Those words of Walt Whitman continue to echo for me. Amid the plodding despair, amid the foolish crowds and faithless self, the question so sad recurring, what good amid these, O oh me, O oh life? Answer, that you are here, that life exists an identity that the powerful play goes on and you may contribute a verse. Walt Whitman knew despair. He wasn't writing from some idyllic past. He was writing during the Civil War. And the Civil War was not just a remote news story for him. Walt Whitman was a volunteer nurse for the North for much of the war. And it's believed he cared for thousands of wounded men doing what he could in the face of horrific suffering. He not only tended to soldiers' wounds, but to their He wanted their loves, loved ones to know and sending these letters to their families and comforting the soldiers with his calm and concern. Like other transcendentalist writers and activists like Ralph Waldo Emerson and Henry David Thoreau, Whitman, was trying to make sense of things without knowing how the story would end. They didn't know when or how slavery would end, 
and they didn't yet know who would win the Civil War or how many would die. And yet Whitman wrote exuberant poetry and Emerson pondered the nature of divinity and Thoreau went into the woods to live deliberately and helped people who had been enslaved make their way to Canada as a conductor on the Underground Railroad and got thrown into jail for refusing to pay his taxes in protest of state endorsed institution of slavery. Their whiteness protected them from much of the terror of their times and their maleness greatly privileged them as well. In large part because of their white maleness, their words and ideas have been handed down through the years and we get this gorgeous quote from Thoreau, one of his most famous. I went into the woods because I wished to live deliberately, to front only the essential facts of life and see if I could not learn what it had to teach and not, when I came to die, discover that I had not lived. I love that almost as much as I love Anne Lamott's modern day equivalent that Carol just read. Don't be so strung out on perfectionism and people pleasing that you forget to have a big, juicy, creative life. Whitman, Thoreau, and Lamont are all talking about living with intention, our theme for the month. Living so deliberately, your life purpose is felt in your very bones. Living so deliberately, the reality of each moment pulses in your heartbeat. This is how I want to live. It's not how I live, but it's how I want to live. Right now, we're trying to make sense of a world that was just beginning to figure out COVID. And then we got hit with the Delta variant, and now we have Omicron. And there have been five and a half million global deaths due to COVID. And an almost incomprehensible amount of financial, emotional, and societal effects. And Black men are still being killed by the state. And a year ago this past week, our national capital was violently taken over by white supremacist insurrectionists. And the war in Syria still rages. We don't know where this story will end, but the powerful play goes on. What will your verse be this year? This is not a hypothetical abstract question I am asking of you today. Each year, I and many others choose intention words for the year. Some of my previous ones have been courage, connection, dance, heal. The TV character Ted Lasso's famous ha handmade sign with the one word intention, believe, changed him and changed his team. When the team embodied that intention, when they believed in themselves and each other, the way they showed up in the world changed as they tapped into their inner strength. I want to share some other examples from a nonprofit leadership group I'm in because they inspire me so much. These are their intention words and short explanations. My word for 2020 is thrive because with health and finances, so much of the last few years have been on surviving. But thriving is about moving beyond disruption towards liberation. My 2020 word is steady. Be as steady as I can for my kids, my partner, my coworker, my loved ones while we're all going through this. Hold steady attention on the present moment as much as I can. Joy. I chose joy January 1st. I'm too darn serious. It scares the heck out of me and I hate it already. Focus, focus on what matters most, on the big picture, on the greatest need, on what's right in front of me. Boundaries, I do all the things for everyone else when I get stressed and it's not sustainable. 
reclaim. The last two years have taken a lot from us and from me personally, I want my spark back. How do you want to show up in 2022? What is your word? Or maybe a word a month is more your speed or a word or a, a word a day. Of course, a two word phrase is fine or whatever works best for you. The invitation here is to set an intention that reminds you of who and how you want to be in this world, what you want more of in this one wild and precious life of yours. You may already know your word or you may have a list of 10 possibilities or your mind may have gone blank and you have no idea. Though I have a long and seemingly ever growing list, I admit I haven't yet chosen my word for 2022, but maybe today's the day. To approach setting your intention word with intention, I want to lead us through a time of individual reflection. I'll read the short poem, Clearing, by Martha Postlewaite twice. This is simply a time for you to listen to that still small voice within. For as Parker Palmer says, before you tell your life what you intend to do with it, listen for what it intends to do with you. If it's comfortable for you, I invite you to place your hands open on your lap, cupping them open, and breathe deeply a few times. Clearing. Do not try to save the whole world or do anything grandiose. Instead, Create a clearing in the dense forest of your life and wait there patiently until the song that is your life falls into your own cupped hands and you recognize and greet it. Only then will you know how to give yourself to this world so worthy of rescue. And again. Do not try to save the whole world or do anything grandiose. Instead, create a clearing in the dense forest of your life and wait there patiently until the song that is your life falls into your own cupped hands and you recognize and greet it. Only then will you know how to give yourself to this world so worthy of rescue. What's landing for you? What are some possible intention words you have for yourself for 2022? Feel free to put them into chat if you'd like, whether it's the one you've decided on or a few you're considering, and it's absolutely okay if someone else has the same word as you. For those in the sanctuary, you can call them out to each other if you'd like. Um, and I will pause a moment to see what is landing for you all. Challenge, thrive, clear. Harmony, see beauty, curiosity, reclaim. My intention is to live in my own energy to say it in one word, centered. Welcome, create, connection, kindness, clarity, insight, joy, care. Compassion, connection, balance.
productive resonance. Yes, 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 all of the above and more. Your life needs you. This community needs you. The world needs you to become fully alive, to accept the word life has placed in your hands and take the message life has entrusted to you and hold it close to your heart. May these intentions be a blessing to you as you use them to bless the world. But know this as well. We don't do this alone. This beautiful litany of words, this poem of possibilities we have created here is powerful both with the clarity of each individual word and how they are in relationship to each other. If my word is courage and yours is love, together we greet the world with courageous love. If my word is breathe and yours is joy, both ground us in the sacredness of each moment. We need self-care. In a culture that tells us we have to constantly hustle for our worthiness, slowing down and taking, ourselves, taking care of ourselves is important. I want to also start talking about community care. No amount of self-care can fix the loneliness of single people who weren't a part of a pod the last two years. No matter how much self-care a parent of young children does, no matter how many spa days or yoga classes they do, if they are raising their children without the support of a wider community, they will burn out. We are not wired to go it alone, though many of us have been forced to learn how to do so. Comments on a viral TikTok video about community care name this reality. These are a few quotes. We get sold individualism a lot in this country and often forget that community is necessary. Your self-care bucket can't fill your friends and family bucket. We ache for connection. You cannot self-care yourself out of things that require community care to fix. You cannot self-care yourself out of things that require community care to fix. In other words, self-care doesn't solve being alone or being lonely. Self-care can't replace the need for community. We need each other. Even Henry David Thoreau, the paragon of self-reliance, didn't actually live in the woods alone. His mom did his laundry and cooked meals for him, the invisible labor of a woman freeing him to study and write. He had guests over regularly to his cabin on Walden Pond to dream and laugh and strategize as abolitionists. Community care is the grand experiment and great promise of Unitarian Universalist religious communities. We too like to pride ourselves on our individualism, but it's community that changes and heals us, and not just any community. The kind of community where we each get to bring our full, authentic selves, our struggles and our gifts, our reason and our hearts, and together build something greater than the sum of its parts. In our opening hymn today, we sang these words, shine bright and true so we may join our songs in new sounds that become full symphony. It's not just about the solo song that falls into our cupped hands, but the symphony we create together not just an isolated verse, but a whole powerful play. We've set our intentions for ourselves, but what about for the Unitarian Universalist Fellowship of Northfield? 
what word would you choose for UUFN for 2022? And if you're newish here, please don't think this question excludes you. What is it your spirit longs for in community? Imagine this. If UUFN created a clearing in the dense forest of change and pandemic and uncertainty and waited there patiently and opened its hands, what word would land there? Feel free to also share these intention words for our UUFN community and chat. And more than that, bring them with you to our congregational meeting next Sunday after the service, and then carry them with you the whole year. Let the word you chose as your individual intention and the word you chose for UUFN guide your involvement in your life and in this community. Let's make manifest all of this potential. The world needs us to. We cannot shrink right now. This is a time of discernment across the United States. People are becoming intentional about how they want to spend their time. Are you passionate about lobbying for affordable housing with other UUs? Join us for Day on the Hill on March 15th. Are you interested in climate justice, racial justice, membership, religious education? Join us. Or maybe instead of, or in addition to what you might give, maybe one of your words is help. And it's time to receive and fill up your spirit instead of adding more to your to-do list. There is both the sacred yes and the holy no. And sometimes we have to say no to some things in order to have room to say yes to others. We don't know how this story will end. The story of the pandemic, of oppressive systems, of personal grief and collective loss. But we set an intention. Harmony, home, communion, open, welcome, insight. We are a thriving community partnering, caring. We focus on the work that is ours to do. We try and fail and try again and make the choice to not go it alone. And we create a big juicy life and justice for all. The powerful play goes on and the world needs our verse. We join together in our hymn of affirmation, just as long as I have breath. Do we have just as long as I have breath? Because we want to say yes to life. But if not, we'll move on. That's Sorry, awesome. I lost internet connectivity. I'm right back. I will play it now. <laughs> I figured it was something like that. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Jen. We appreciate you. Also not hearing sound. Not just me.
Sarah, Kent and Terry hear you. Just one moment. Thank you. Just as long as I have breath, I will stand to life. Oh, with pain I made my way, with hope I meet each day. If they ask what I did well, tell them I said yes to life. Just as long as vision lasts, I must answer yes to truth in my dream and in my dark always that elusive spark if they ask what i did well tell them i said yes to truth just as long as my heart beats We turn our attention now to the wider world as we take our offertory. Our share the plate donations for January go to Girls Taking Action, GTA. Girls Taking Action strives to motivate, empower, and educate girls across the globe. By actualizing their personal leadership, these girls create positive social change in their local community. Today, GTA has impacted over 3,000 middle school and high school girls throughout Minnesota, Michigan, and Georgia as well as Guatemala, Kenya, and Liberia. Girls in their program are twice as likely to attend post-secondary education with 95% graduating from high school on time and 75% attending college. Please give generously to change a girl's life and change the world. You may contribute now online by going to our website, uunorthfield.org, clicking on the yellow donate button on the right-hand column and then selecting share the plate, or you can make a check made payable to UUFN with offering basket written on the memo line. If you're in our church building, please put cash or a check in the basket. As always, thank you for giving as you are able. Our closing words are by Eric Walker Wickstrom. If you are who you were, and if the person next to you, in person or in Zoom, is who or who he or she was, if none of us has changed since the day we came in here, we have failed. The purpose of this community, of any church, temple, zendo, mosque, is to help its people grow. We do this through encounters with the unknown in ourselves, in one another, in the other, whoever that might be for us, however hard that may, might be, because these encounters have many gifts to offer. So may you go forth from here this morning, not who you were, but who you could be. So may we all. Please join us in singing or humming our final hymn, Spirit of Life.
please join me as we extinguish our chalice here and in your homes. You will see the words on your screen. We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Go in peace.